Item number SCP-6537, Security Level 1, Containment Class, Keter, Disruption Class, Vlam, Assigned Site, Site 866, Site Director, Director Drift, Research Head, Dr. Spinner, Assigned Task Force, Not Applicable, Special Containment Procedures, Containment of all instances of SCP-6537 is not currently pursued as it is considered infeasible. Expungement of footage and suppression of research has been deemed sufficient. SCP-6537 contained by the Foundation are kept at Site 866 in an enclosure built to function as a Faraday cage. Research personnel should avoid entering the enclosure. Description SCP-6537 is the collective designation for an anomalous species of hawk moth that is capable of lateral teleportation for up to 10 centimeters. They employ this ability both to avoid danger and to gain access to food sources otherwise unavailable. The method of teleportation involves SCP-6537 dispersing into electromagnetic radiation and then rematerializing. How they manage this is unclear, but seems to be linked to their wings somehow, as they ceased exhibiting a numbness of phenomena if they are amputated. It is unknown whether caterpillars of SCP-6537 possess any anomalous qualities, as all attempts at inducing breeding have been unsuccessful. Addendum 6537-1 3rd of September 2021. SCP-6537 are truly remarkable. I've been studying them for a good couple of weeks now, and while their teleportation abilities are an incredibly fascinating example of anomalous evolution, it has recently been surpassed in importance by something much more interesting. Just yesterday, I witnessed an instance instructing others on which flowers in the enclosure hold the most nectar. This mite is at just a higher level of intelligence than is typical for insects, and this kind of coordination is virtually unheard of in Lepidoptera. In addition, during the observation, the instructing instance formed a series of consecutive teleportations that didn't appear to have an immediate reason behind it. Could this have been part of a language of some sort? Something akin to the way bees dance to communicate, perhaps? I will have to study this further. 5th of September, 2021. No progress yet, but a complication. Today, while my assistant was conducting experiments, one of the moths teleported inside her throat by accident and she began to choke. She's fine, if not a little rattled, but the containment specialist has insisted on a revision due to containment procedures that limits our access to the enclosure. Not the end of the world, but annoying. I've sent a request to the site director for a set of D-class to continue my experiment. 12th of September, 2021. We are back on track. We have been supplementing SCP-6537's diet with some rat carcasses, while simultaneously getting them accustomed to a specific feeding shed role to see if we can condition them. The carcasses are brought in at the same time every day by the same D-class, and they are catching on. They have begun flocking in front of the entrance right before feeding time, teleporting around excitedly. Not just that. They've also grown to associate the appointed D-class with food. Just today, we made two D-class enter, the usual feeder, and one they haven't met. Almost all of them stuck close to the one they recognize, largely ignoring the other. In other news, we may have to pick up the pace for our experiment, as SCP-6537 are still not breeding, and with moth's lifespans being what they are, some of them have begun dying out. Or I assume they have, because the number of specimens in containment has definitely decreased, but we can't find any bodies. We've checked the integrity of the Faraday cage, so there's no way they would have escaped. For now, I'm assuming that they just eat their dead. 
but we haven't actually seen that happening. 21st of September 2021, not much to note. Progress had been frustratingly slow. I feel slow. I'm tired and anxious all the time. Never really had burnout before. But I'm not the only one. The D class have been acting strange lately. They're quiet. Still, don't do much outside their duties. They attend to the moths and just sit in their bunks. Honestly, it's probably just boredom. This is hardly an exciting assignment. But between that and my assistant taking a month off for sick leave, I'm starting to feel quite isolated. Like I'm in a cocoon. At least I have the moths. 23rd of September, 2021. The lack of progress starting to really get to me. It's hard to think. I try to write down my observations, but the words just fly away. I can't sleep because every time I try, I hear it. The fluttering, I hear it inside my skull and feel it behind my eyelids. 27th of September, 2021. I find myself in the cage today. I don't remember walking there. I swear I saw a moth that wasn't there before. It's young, still slicked from the cocoon. But there are no cocoons. Where did it come from? 28th of September, 2021. Oh, I see. To Director Drift, from Dr. Spinner. Subject, CD 537. We need more people. The previous ones have been fully used. To Dr. Spinner, from Director Drift. Subject, regarding 6537. More? You are testing the intelligence of some bugs. What could you possibly need more D-Class for? And what do you mean by fully used? Additionally, I've gotten several reports from your co-workers that have been acting weirdly as of late. I know we're all practicing social distancing right now, but I think this requires an in-person conversation rather than an email exchange. Could you come to my office today at 16.45? Incident Report 65371 On the 15th of October 2021 a site-wide containment breach occurred as Dr. Spinner was making his way towards the site director's office, and he was terminated in the ensuing chaos. The injuries on the researcher's body were observed not to bleed, instead filled with an organic material resembling silk. An autopsy was ordered, and the body was found to contain hundreds of living scp 537 instances, as well as the eggs. Further examination revealed that Dr. Spinner had been dead for approximately three weeks. Site 866 has been decommissioned and decontaminated. The containment of all SCP-6537 instances is considered a top priority.